Hey folks, how's it going? Today we're going to be taking a look at how you can build basic swipe detection on any kind of container inside a touch designer. And the fun thing about this is it's really easy to set up, really easy to control, doesn't need any kind of Python programming or anything like that. We're going to do everything in chops today. Now, one thing you should know about this is that it really only works well on single touch or single interaction type of installations. So maybe you have something like a photo carousel or just a single screen that someone's working with. Once you get into multi-touch, you'll have to probably move over to render picking or doing this in another method. But for very simple installations, this is a quick and easy way to detect swipes. Now you can see here, I have a trail chop and we're gonna be building all of this from scratch right now. And you can see I have different channels for my swipe right, swipe left, swipe up, and swipe down. And as I do things like click and swipe right, you can see I get triggers on my swipe right channel. And if I do things like swipe up, down, left, or right, all of my individual channels get their appropriate triggers. So let's go ahead and delete all of this and start from scratch. So the first thing we're gonna do is make a container comp. And I'm just gonna set this to be 400 by 400, just so that when I open this and view it, I have a nice little square area that I can play inside of. The next thing I wanna do is need to get the actual channel values from this container to tell me about where the clicks are, when the clicks are happening. And for this, we're always gonna use the panel chop. So I'll go ahead and make a panel chop. And then what I wanna do is in my component parameter here, I wanna reference the container that I wanna detect the swipes on. So be careful because a lot of times when people make panel chops like this, they don't realize the panel chop is looking at the parent container and not the one that might be around them or the container that they're using. So we're gonna go ahead and overwrite that component. And now I can see that if I zoom into this panel chop, as I do things inside of my container, like click and drag around and move my mouse around, I'm gonna get a lot of channel activity in here. So that's great. Now, first we need to get our position because the way we're gonna calculate our swipe gestures is we're gonna calculate the speed change in position over time while that mouse button is held down. So we can see in the middle here, we have a lot of different options for getting our position. So we're gonna start with our UV and this isn't gonna be the channel we're gonna use because we're gonna quickly run into an issue with it, but I think it's a good way to show the issue and how to get around it. So what I'm gonna do is make another select chop here because I'm actually gonna select out different channels to do different things over time. So in this select chop, I can go ahead and select my U and V channels. And now we can see as I click and drag around inside of the panel, I get updated U and V values. And when I'm not clicking down or you know dragging around, those values aren't updating. So. How are we gonna calculate the change of speed over time of these positions? Well, luckily for us, we have something in Touch Designer called a slope chop. And for those that remember math, the slope is the first derivative here. If that made no sense to you, don't worry. That's also in, you're on my team if that didn't make too much sense to you. But this slope essentially, when we're working with positions, can calculate the speed of that kind of moving target over time. So a good example of this is if I plug in my U and V positions to my slope chop here, and then I do something like make a trail chop, which is always a great friend when you're working with chop channels. What we can do is do something like move our mouse at different speeds, and we can see over here that the faster we move our mouse in the direction positive, which is the right towards the right, we'll see that we get higher values. And if we move it towards the left, we get negative values on our X channel here. And similarly, if we go up and down, we can see that as I go up and down very quickly, I'm gonna get bigger and bigger value ranges. But if I go up and down slowly, my Y channel is just gonna kind of hover up and down because the speed of my movement is very slow. Now you may also noticed that as I've been doing this, you know, if I do something like click on one side of the screen, but I don't drag, and then I go to the other side of the screen and click, I get these big spike channels. And that's because the UV isn't updating all the time. It only updates when I click. And when I click, that position is gonna jump from where the last click position was to that new click position, which unfortunately interferes with our slope chop and it basically reads as a instantaneous super fast swipe. 
So that's kind of one of the reasons why we can't actually use our UV here. And what I find to use is better is the inside U and inside V channels. Now these function very similarly, except the only difference is that it works both when it's clicked down and when you're not clicked down. So even if I'm just hovering over the container, I'm getting new UV positions. If I'm clicking and dragging, I'm getting new UV positions. Just by making this small change, what we're able to do is avoid those big spikes inside of our channels. Now, one problem we're gonna have now instead is that it's always active. So whether we're clicking and dragging or whether we're just hovering around, we're getting all of these slope channel outputs. But that's okay because we can account for that very simply by actually taking our click channel and multiplying it by the output of the slope. So I'll go ahead and make another select chop here. And in this case, the channel I'm gonna grab is the select channel. And then very simply, I'm just gonna put a math after my slope. And I'm gonna multiply all of these chop channels together. So now you can see if I'm hovering inside and moving around, I'm not getting any kind of change in my slope. But once I start clicking and doing things like clicking and dragging around, I'm gonna be getting different slope channels. But you can also see now that we have this new setup, even if I start clicking, you know, bouncing between the different sides of the screen or clicking in very strange places, I'm not getting any of those snaps or big spikes inside of my data. So this is a great thing to do. And this is something that you're gonna find you do a lot when you're working with chops is take some data, process it, you know, maybe multiply it against a zero or one value, whether you want it to be active or inactive. Very common workflow here. So now that we essentially have these slope channels, what we can do is start to split our X and our Y apart, and then we're gonna set the boundaries on how hard of a swipe we actually want to turn into a trigger. So let's start with this very simply. Let's grab another select chop here. And let's grab the inside U. So now first we're gonna set up our left and right swipes. Now you might be surprised, but one of my favorite chops is actually the logic chop. And the logic chop has so many uses. And one of the uses that we're gonna use now is basically to be able to turn a signal that could have any value into a very simple zero to one signal. And we can do that based on a value range. So what we can see if we look at the trail and we look at our inside U and V, I can start to think to myself, how hard of a swipe or how fast or deliberate of a swipe do I actually want to detect? So for example, if someone clicks on the left side of the screen and you know swipes this slowly, am I gonna consider that a swipe? Probably not. So what that tells me is that if I'm looking at a value range of zero to one, that's too low. So then I can start to do some natural swipes on this container to figure out where my value range is. So for example, if I start doing swipes from the left side to the right side, you know, 20, I can see values of 10. You know, maybe this is too slow, but that's okay. So I can start to figure out, and this is something that you'll have to do for your particular installation, because it'll be different whether it's a mouse, whether it's joystick, or whether it's a touch screen, because you can do this with any kind of data, even connect data, you can create swipes out of this. So I'm gonna say for my purposes, above a seven, to a 20 range on the positive is going to be a swipe for me. So what I can do is go to my logic, grab my inside U channel, plug that into the logic, and in my logic, I'm gonna change the convert input from off when zero or less, and I'm gonna say off when outside of bounds. Now this is super powerful because I can tell it the exact boundaries of when you're inside of this range, turn on, and when you're outside of this range, turn off. So we already decided that my range is from seven to 20 is gonna be on and everything else is off. So now if I plug this back into my trail so we can also watch that, what we can see is if I start to do slow drags and slow drags, we don't see anything in that third channel of my logic. But if I start to do these bigger drags, what's happening is the value of my slope is inside of my range of seven to 20, which then tells my logic chop give me an active one channel. Perfect. Now, if so far you've been following along, everything else after this is super easy because we can just take this and copy and paste this for each of our different directions. 
So for example, 7 to 20 is going to be our positive direction on the x. And what we can do is assume that we want the same in the left direction, but the only difference is the left goes to the negative side of the values. So if I even just copy and paste this logic, what I can say is, well, I want this to go on from negative 7 to negative 20. And then I can trail that as well. So now as I move in here, let me swipe from the left side over to the right side. And we can see that's activating my third channel here. And if I do the same in reverse from the right side to the left side, it's activating my left side swipe channel. So immediately, the first thing you should do, especially if you're turning you know, touch designer work into a career, is rename the channels because inside U, inside V, inside U1, and inside U2 is not helpful for anybody. So I'm gonna drop a few rename chops in between our logics and our trails. So I'm gonna call this channel swipe right. And I'll copy and paste that for my swipe left here. And then I'll overwrite the previous connection I had. There we go. So now we can easily see swipes to the right and swipes to the left getting triggered. Now, when it comes to doing the same thing for our up and downward swipes, like I said, just copy and paste and some slight tweaks. So we know the first thing we're going to copy is our select. And now instead of the U, we're going to grab the V channel. We could even copy these two logics because we know the V is also going to have one positive direction and one negative direction. So I can go ahead and overwrite these channels here so that my inside V goes to a pair of logic chops. And you could even start this by keeping those same values of 7 and 20 because those are just representations of how fast it's moving. And you probably want to have your swipe gestures be pretty equal in most directions. Now I'm also going to copy those renames so I can name these channels appropriately. So we know the first one in the positive direction is going to be my swipe up and the negative direction is going to be my swipe down. Now, unfortunately, the trail chop only has four inputs. So a nice trick that I like to do is if I have, you know, four sets of channels that I want to plug into a trail along with another channel, I can go ahead and first actually plug all of these into a merge chop. So I can grab my four swipe channels, merge them all together, and then I have a single chop that I can plug into the trail. And look at that, nice and clean. Now we have our inside U and V channels at the top. And then as I do gestures like swiping left and right, or swiping up and down, we can see all of those channels getting triggered. And the nice thing is, because of the way we've structured this with logic chops, all of our data is really just single channel, single sample data. So if we wanted to take this swipe right and maybe have it affect a parameter, we could just grab the reference from this channel and drag and drop it wherever we want to go. You could even plug these into something like a lag, which is a nice thing to do because what it allows you to do is say, every time there's a swipe, give me an instant attack. So in this case, what we want to do is set the lag value that goes upwards to be zero, but give me a nice trail off. So what we can do is set the lag value down to be something like one. So now if I also trail this, and you can tell I'm a big fan of trailing. I love me some trailing. Now I have my inside U and V channels at the top. I can see my swipe right, my swipe to the right <laughs> individual toggles there, just the sharp on and offs. But also I have a new channel here that gives me a nice little ADSR for each one of those. So from my right, up, down, left, any direction, I now have this nice ADSR. So this is a really easy way that with just a handful of chops, you can take basically any containers input, you can take data from connect cameras, from mouse, joystick, from OSC channels coming from other devices. You can take any of those things, feed your X and Y into a slope chop and a network similar like this, and you can easily and quickly create swipe gestures for your installation. Enjoy. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, 
Don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.